Hi, welcome to a little lecture on genre for um, teens for our YA materials class. I wanted to tell you um, that I really, really enjoy Reader's Advisory with teens. And so I've, I've come to know after working with teens um, most of my adult life and in a library situation since 1997, um, that the more effective I can be in understanding um, what's out there for them to read and what they enjoy reading, and that's where Reader's Advisory fits in, and then understanding how important genre is. And it's important to adults as well, so it makes sense that it would be important to teens and even um, keep going down in age to children. Uh, so if you want to connect um, a teen to a book, understanding genres and what's out there and the fact that you may want them to read really widely and so probably to do their parents but most of the kids that I worked with they really liked a certain type of book the supernatural realistic fiction uh, science fiction and they wanted to read as much as they possibly could within that genre so I took it upon myself to really want as a youth services librarian to stay up on what was hot and what was not and especially how that pertains to your um, library demographics and how your circulation is working. I assigned um, Diane Harrell, Diana Harold's book to the class because I think that she even though the book is from 2003 I really think that she has um, incredible explanations as to um, what genre is what the major categories of genre are, and then what the subgenres are. I, when I first picked up her, um, a workshop flyer years ago to go to a workshop with her, um, I didn't know who she was. I was just a baby youth services librarian. I had come from a school background and had, you know, at the, been at a time where having the teaching certificate was a lot more important than having the library degree, and so. There were a lot of reasons I was in the library, but I, I felt at that particular time in my life that I needed to understand more about libraries. And so a friend and I went, and it was an incredible, incredible experience. I also went and saw her again in 2004 um, at PLA in Boston, and it was just an incredibly wonderful two hours of looking at genres for teenagers and adults and seeing how publishing trends work and how certain books get to be popular uh, based on marketing um, and not just looking at the Harry Potters but looking at the phenomena of like a Stephanie Meyer being marketed well not only creating a wonderful series um, which sadly seems to be really taken over by teenage girls but uh, Romance, suspense, adventure, um, paranormal, vampires, werewolves, uh, great characters. I mean, it was. It's just you know, it's like um, it's an, an it's a really uh, a pleasure to to see what's coming out in YA over the last decades. So, she taught me to look way beyond. Uh, just looking at circulation statistics, but to also start looking at breaking it down so that I looked at different genres to see if we really were buying what was what was circulating, and in turn, were we missing something that could circulate? And I know that a lot of you have taken collection development, or will do, and just keep in the back of your mind how important genre is. So, this little set of lectures is, is going to be my opinions again about what I think is important about genres. Um, and the one thing I always try to sell all my classes on is that teens are your patrons. And so when you, um, you see teens come in, there's a potential customer, a life customer. And how you uh, interact with them is basically how they're going to view the library. Uh, it's all about people and communicating. So whether they're coming into the library to do some gaming or maybe they are in there because they have to do homework, 
reach out to them with attractive displays no matter how small your space is figure out a way to do d displays and feature genres that you think might be of interest so that maybe they're on their way out from a gaming session or using the internet and they're going to stop by that and see oh wow adventure and survival and you've got a good mix of nonfiction and fiction and adult crossovers and and it's that one moment where a kid connects to a book and picks it up and walks out the door um, so make sure that you are listening to the teens in your library um, you don't have to be um, you know intrusive uh, it is it is good to always remember that um, attitudes everything and while they have a, an attitude as a teenager you have an adult attitude and sometimes the two don't mix very well but then on the other hand sometimes those two um, one person can make all the difference in how they reach out so uh, knowing genre if you see someone perusing around you know the the stacks and you can say oh um, you know what do you like to read or you know you have to do the body language thing you have to know they're receptive but um, or someone comes up and says you know I've read all the Meg Cabot there is and I really love her and I can't find anything new and can you help me and you're sitting there going oh hmm romance is not really my thing well you need to make it your thing at least from the perspective is that you've read a couple you know who the major authors are in it and you've got some on your shelves um, knowing that genre is no longer cut and dry just general classifications of genre but that there are subgenres there are hybrids that contain four or five different genres within one book um, so that when somebody comes in and I'm going to use Chris Crutcher as an example and says that they really like sports and so Chris Crutcher is a great one to recommend for uh, reading about sports um, someone says I really like to read about um, you know they're not going to use the words coming of age that's a that's an adult term but there I like to read about real life well Chris Crutcher is a good one for that he writes about real life um, I want interesting characters I want characters that I can relate to well bingo there's Chris Crutcher with with his character development um, let's just say that you um, have a reader that comes in and they they want to um, read something uh, about um, you know science fiction they want it to be a little bit about hard science fiction but they also love adventure well you may go to Ray Bradbury or Isaac Asimov but you can go to a teen author and um, Scott Orson Card and you can suggest the Ender series lots of hard science fiction at the same time great adventure story um, and you kind of wrap that all up into also being able to give them if they like that they're going to be able to read the whole Ender series and maybe lead them into um, something else that you can suggest so when you when you become a youth services librarian a lot of people say do I do I have to read all this I mean can't I just use reviews well the easy point that that I make and you'll hear me say it multiple times is that you need to read as much as you possibly can now what does that mean to the individual I try and read as much as I can in YA by looking at how much time I have but I do make a point to try and read at least um, 10 to 15 YA novels a month now I used to read five YA novels a week but since I have other responsibilities now with my dissertation and teaching more classes for San Jose I've had to scale that back but every Monday morning I go on to Yalsa and several other sites that I use I look at um, lots and lots of lists that comes through um, uh, different listservs. I belong to the Yalsa listserv and so there's always good suggestions made on it for what to read. I do keep a lot of review information. I'm always trying to look for things that I don't know a lot about in different genres and you know 